Hi. This is what I call my uh, deviation project. Instead of building steam engines, I've decided to have a go at building a Wimsurf machine, an uh, electrically influenced machine, as they know, known as static electricity machine. Um, I'm describing this in a, in another video, but at the moment, um, what I'm going to do is uh, describe the use of uh, of brass balls in the machine. Now, on a Wimsurf machine, the discharge rods uh, end in uh, brass balls to discharge the spark. Everything's got to be smooth. You can't have any sharp edges on a Wimsurf machine. Um, I need brass balls to fit on the end of these collectors. Now these collectors uh, are called combs, collecting combs, and these uh, these type of rods will be fitted at either side, and they'll have small needle points fairly close to the um, to the machine when they rotate. I have a small brass balls on the end of these, which I easily obtain these these small brass balls from Hong Kong, <clears throat> and all I've done is just drill them to uh, fit on the uh, on the rods. That isn't the problem. The problem is I need three quarter inch to one inch diameter brass balls on either of these collectors. Now the trouble is I can uh, I can use solid brass balls which I made. I made some solid ones many years ago for a different project, and the, these are uh, are solid. And they're very heavy. This is the problem. You can't get hollow brass balls anywhere in Britain, not to my knowledge, I've tried everywhere and I can't get, get and uh, what I need to do is to make these balls fit on the end of these uh, collectors and then on the end of the collectors we'll have rods which will pass pass through and are adjustable and they'll end up with uh, large and small um, discharge balls now we do have a large ball which is perfect for the job. <clears throat> this is this is what I have and I picked this up and another one at a car boat sale many years ago and they're perfect but I, I only want one large one but I need a small one but I can't use the solid brass ball because they're too heavy. Now these don't weigh anything, they're very light and whether they're off a doorknob I don't know or a brass bedstead or some finial of, uh, of of some kind, I don't know. That, that these are vintage. These are very old. Uh, I was told by the vendor to sell me them. So what I need to do is uh, modify these. Now you can get stainless steel um, balls. These are off of, I believe, curtain rods. But really, stainless is not. Uh, it's not nice looking, really. And um, I don't really plan to use these. And I don't think they'll be very good anyway. But the um, the solid brass balls here, they're quite heavy. So what I'm going to do with these is modify them. And I'm going to um, hollow them out. And it looks an impossible job. But uh, these, these two, I'm going to hollow them out. They're very heavy. Same with these. Another brass ball here, again very very heavy but uh, I shan't be using that but uh, these two. So the next job is to get these uh, set up and make them hollow. So I'm going to have a go and, uh, and see how I go on. Just now we're uh, going to place the, uh, the ball in the chuck. Get it reasonably true, and then uh, I'm going to drill and tap it. The reason for drilling and tapping is that I can um, hold it on a piece of threaded rod or a bolt so that the um, the ball can be parted off in uh, into halves. Now I need to drill and tap. What I need 
need to do now is to drill, measure the depth, the diameter of the uh, the ball, which is approximately seven eighths. So I shall go down seven eighths, uh, three quarters of an inch depth. Now down at three quarters of an inch depth. I shall now uh, tap the uh, ball. I'm actually using a quarter BSW uh, tap, um, it's a coarse thread and this suited the uh, method what I was going to use, I suppose you can use any kind of uh, thread really, although you don't want to be too small because it won't hold the ball uh, securely. Take it out. Now I can screw the uh, bolt in and uh, tighten up the lock nut. What I need to do now is the tricky bit is to part it off in the middle. First of all, we need to lock the lock nut up against the ball. It's nice and tight, nicely locked. And now, should be able to part it off. And just line it in the centre of the ball with the rear parting off blade. What I'm using here is actually a stop what I use on the lathe and it's uh, it's in the form of a tube with a small um, chamfer in, in the bore. It's ideal for uh, holding the ball in position. Acts like a, a, a hollow centre and, and it enables me to part off most of the ball with this, uh, this centre holding it in position. What I'm doing here is releasing the hollow center and I'm going to continue parting off. There's only a tiny amount left to uh, to part off which it will break into the tap hole. The reason I'm removing the, uh, the center is that if I continue parting off with the center in it could jam and break the tool. What I'm doing here now is to uh, slightly deepen this uh, half hemisphere 
you've got to be careful you don't drill too deep otherwise um, it'll just drop off the uh, small boss but you just play it by eye uh, 